Hello and welcome to worship at Easter Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Brandon and preaching today is Pastor Megan and we are still in the season of Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're so glad you're joining us for worship and we want to invite you to several other important faith forming community building events through Easter Lutheran Church. So we have a special invitation for you by video to Spring Fling. Roll it! Hello, it's Pastor Brandon here and guess what? We are nearing the end of our program year, so I have a very important and serious announcement to make. You are invited to Spring Fling. That's right, we are celebrating the end of our program year and we have so much to celebrate. We've made it through another year of the pandemic. We've continued to reach new people and grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ. And we continue to build wonderful relationships with our community partners. It's in that same spirit of relationship that we're celebrating Spring Fling on Thursday, May 19th from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. at Easter by the Lake. We are partnering with Treehouse, Easter Preschool, Loaves and Fishes, Homework Help Reaching Up, the Hispanic Church, and all of you wonderful people to throw this party. It's gonna be amazing. There's gonna be inflatables. There's gonna be free food, including tacos, hot dogs, burgers, and popcorn. And there's gonna be games and prizes at a dunk tank that will have Pastor Megan, myself, or some of our other wonderful program leaders. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this opportunity to celebrate, to meet some people from our partners, to win prizes, and just have a great time celebrating all God has been creating here as we remember that we truly are better together. I look forward to seeing you on May 19th. As the video mentioned, we hope you'll join us on May 19th and bring your family, bring your friends, everybody is welcome. Also, please know on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m., I'm continuing to host a special series called Reimagining Mission, Building on Relationships and Strengths, where we hear from a number of guest speakers to move our understanding of mission from doing for others toward doing with others and in relationship with our neighbors. Those sessions are being recorded and placed on Easter Connect under the class name. You are welcome to join us on Zoom Tuesdays at 6.30. Also, you are invited to two very special breakfast events on May 14th at 8 a.m. at Easter on the Hill. Join Man Up for breakfast and the guest speaker is Pastor Steve sharing his faith story. Now, here's a special invitation. Women are invited. That can't be right. It is right. Yes, men, if you're looking for a way to start engaging in the Man Up group, come and guess what? Invite your partner or spouse or bring a friend. It's for men and women on May 14th. And then guess what? On June 4th, also at 8 a.m., come and have breakfast and hear Pastor Megan share her faith story with the women's group. And men are invited. That's correct. Women come to this special breakfast and you're free to invite your spouse or partner or neighbor and friend. Everybody is welcome. It's a fantastic opportunity to invite new people and connect with new friends at Easter Lutheran Church. We just ask that you register online so we know how many eggs to scramble. Thank you so much again for joining us at Easter Lutheran Church, where our mission is to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ. We continue our worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
when darkness tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy i own when brokenness and pain is all i know i won't be shaken i won't be shaken Please join me in the prayer of the day. O oh God, your son surprises us with gifts of community and trust. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all people, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey, everybody. I love spring. Well, I mean, I usually love spring. This spring's been kind of not so fun, right? A little cold, a little gray, a little wet. Not fun. But one of the things that can be really fun about spring, and I swear it'll happen soon, is that spring is a time that's full of lots of change. It's a time when we get to see things change. For instance, you get to see a little egg change into a baby chick. Are any of you seeing chicks hatch in your classrooms? Pretty fun right now, right? Another thing that we see change is you look at a branch and it looks like it's just a dead branch, but if you look really close, you see little buds and those buds change into leaves. It's really beautiful. Or my favorite, you see a tiny little seed, which looks basically like a tiny little pebble, right? But you plant it and with sun and warmth and rain, it grows and it changes 
into a plant. Maybe, maybe something you can eat like a delicious tomato plant or maybe something beautiful like a flower. I love to see how things can change, especially when they surprise us by changing from things that look like they're not very interesting or exciting or, or maybe there's no life happening into something beautiful or exciting or full of life. In the story that we're going to hear today, we're going to hear a story of two men who change. One man changes from someone who's very, very mean, who wants to get after people that he thinks don't fit in or aren't supposed to be worshiping or living a certain way, and he changes into someone who shares those beliefs. That man's name is Saul. We'll hear more about him in the lesson. But we also hear about a man named Ananias, and he changes too. He changes from someone who's very scared, who doesn't want to talk to a man like Saul because he's afraid of what will happen, but he changes into someone who's willing to share and help and encourage and support. And the thing that helps both those men change is Jesus talks to them. He appears to them and he reminds them that he's in control, he loves them very much, and that Jesus is going to keep working in the world so that good things can happen. So as you're seeing all this change happen around you, buds opening and eggs hatching and flowers growing, think about change and think about the ways that Jesus works in our hearts and other people's hearts to bring change to their lives too. Let's pray. God, thank you for sending us Jesus. Thank you for the ways that he changes our hearts. Help us to grow and change and keep following you just as you want us to. Amen. Uh, a reading from Acts 9, verses 1 to 19a. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them, to, bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? They replied to him, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and through his eyes, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. At the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias <clears throat> answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, 
and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I have been thinking so much about the current sermon series that we have right now uh, called Life in His Name. I love how Pastor Steve introduced the series to us with the story of Thomas, reminding us that trusting God doesn't mean we won't sometimes have questions or, or need some guidance from our Savior and, and lets us hear that the whole story of John's Gospel shares stories of Jesus' life so that we might have life in his name. When we trust Jesus, we have life in his name. And so today we move from John's Gospel into the book of Acts. Acts is another series of stories, but these stories are shared with us so that we can hear what the earliest followers of Jesus did as they followed Jesus' instructions to love one another as he loved them. So I've been thinking a lot about, about life and trust and love. I was thinking about those themes recently when I, when I met up with a dear friend of mine and um, when you're a pastor, <laughs> your friends often feel like they need to tell you about how their churches are doing. <laughs> but our conversation turned uh, to a story that she told me about a, about, about a church that she had visited recently. And as I hope you know, it is an act of real vulnerability to visit a new church. So things went really well for her and her family at first. The building looked nice, the people were friendly, the music and worship was good, and then the sermon happened. The preacher on that day ended up talking about how really everyone who was gathered in worship that morning should be afraid of how God would judge them. They should be anxious about the state of their souls. They should be asking themselves, am I going to get into heaven? And the preacher on that day uh, let them know that really the best way for them to not have to worry about getting into heaven was to act, talk, believe, and worship exactly as the preacher told them they should. There was one way to be faithful. There was one right kind of Christian. And the only point of getting all those things right was to know whether or not you'd get into heaven at the end. And, um, and that was it for my friend. She was done. Any place that would question if God could love her family was not the place for her. Any place that assumed that the only point of faith was getting into heaven and, and not caring for people in Christ's name. That was not the place for her. Any place that had decided there was only one way to be a faithful follower, and conveniently, it was the way that they approved of, that was not the place for her. I hope you've got at least a little bit of an amen in your heart about all of that, because we don't get to decide who God loves. I will say it again. We don't get to decide who God loves. We don't think of heaven as the only goal of a life of faith, especially at the expense of serving our neighbor in God's name here and now. We praise God for the many expressions of faith around the world and even right in our own backyard. And we count ourselves as siblings in Christ with each of those people. Can I get an amen? And you know that it's not just that one church who tries to sell those lies, right? or even one kind of church or one denomination or tradition, even though you probably heard me tell that story and, and you immediately filled in a particular place or tradition that must have been that church on that fateful Sunday morning. No, the tough thing is that could have been any church. And you know that we, even we are not exempt from that kind of thinking, right? 
I mean, how many times have I heard that obviously someone could not possibly be Christian because of the way that they voted or because of the cause that they advocated or the way that they spoke about God? How many times have I heard someone say that, that God could not possibly be worshiped in that way? How on earth is a rock and roll band real worship? Or how on earth is a stuffy choir and organ real worship? <sighs> Too many times, friends, I have heard those things too many times. See, our human tendency is to assume that God can only work in ways that we understand. And, and especially when it's a person that we're struggling to understand, it is far easier for us to find reasons why God could not possibly work through that person. Even saying that people should be afraid of what God will do with them after they're dying, well, it's just another way of saying you're not worth enough in this life to matter to God in the life to come. <laughs> if we can be the gatekeepers to God's love and grace, then we never have to be challenged by the wideness of God's mercy, whether in this life or the next. And I think I'm standing on solid ground when I say those things, because we hear, for instance, in today's story about two men who were very sure that they knew who God loved and how and why. The first man was Saul. Now Saul will later be renamed Paul, and he will be the main driver behind sharing the good news of Jesus Christ to new people and different traditions and other countries. But in our story today, he's still Saul, and he is a, a traditional faith leader. He is a Pharisee with a very particular version of just how to obey God. And to him, Jesus' claim to be the Son of God is blasphemy. And still more, if Jesus claims to be the Son of God, he puts himself at odds with the empire, which means the oppressive Roman regime could accuse them all of treason and stomp them out. So Saul would rather arrest, persecute, and even kill those who followed the way of Jesus Christ because he could not envision God at work through such dangerous, heretical means. And on the other side of the equation, we have Ananias, a devout follower of Jesus. Ananias receives word from the Lord that he is to go to Saul to pray for him and heal him. And as you might imagine, uh, Ananias is reluctant. <laughs> he knows that Saul has been attacking believers. Why would Saul spare Ananias? How on earth could God possibly work through a zealot like Saul? Both men arguably have, have very good explanations for their assumptions about who God can love and what God might do in their lives. Both men ultimately are literally afraid for their lives. Saul, because he sees the, Jew, the Jesus movement as a threat to the existence of his people and his tradition. And Ananias, because he sees Saul as a murderer. But as we hear in this story, Jesus appears to both of them. Jesus did not wait for them to get it right. Jesus did not wait for them to change their minds. Jesus did not wait for them to start living in the right way, whatever the right way actually was. Jesus did not ask them what their theology on salvation was and refuse to save them if they got it wrong. Jesus simply showed up to both of these men for one reason, so that they could go back out into the world that God so loves, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ to absolutely everyone, regardless of tradition or position, and serving these people in God's holy name. And that, 
friends. That is why we are going to continue to be a place that focuses on loving and serving God and neighbor now, here, today. That is why we are going to continue to see ourselves as part of a larger beloved family of believers of many different traditions and denominations and expressions and styles. That is why we are going to stay open to the movement of the Holy Spirit among us, which calls us to, to new and unexpected and sometimes uncomfortable people and places. We have no agenda other than to go out into the world that God loves, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ to absolutely everyone, regardless of tradition or position, and serving them in God's name. Just like Ananias, just like Saul, just like the earliest believers, everything we do is in service of this holy calling. We do not worry about who God loves. <laughs> we don't even worry if God loves us because we trust that we have life in his name and that that life is the light of all people always to the glory of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. For our offering moment today, we are celebrating with our high school graduates. Thank you for continuing to pray for these high school students as they move into whatever the next chapter is in their lives. Thank you for supporting them and their families with your generosity, which helps us to offer youth ministry programming. And so for our offering moment, we hope you enjoy this video featuring images of our graduating seniors. Thank you for your generosity and prayerful support.
Please join me in the offering prayer. You are holy, God. Every day you grant us many blessings, including these gifts we share now. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, show us your power at work in unexpected places as we praise you and share your gift of life with all people through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We turn our hearts to God in prayer, expecting to be changed by our encounter with the holiness of God, even as we ask God to change our hearts, lives, and situations for the good of all people. Let us pray. We come before you, God, recognizing that we set limits on your grace and love. We regret the many ways we've made boundaries that don't exist so that we can feel in control and worthy of you. Remind us of your son's gift of life and hope so that we can live in loving community with all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you, God, still praising your name and filled with Easter hope. Keep our alleluias strong and joyful in this season of new life. Bless the ministries of Nianzwa Parish and its preaching points in, Tan in Nianzwa, Tanzania. Bless El Salvador del Mundo in Guatemala City, Guatemala, and San Marcos in Maya Itza, Guatemala. Bless the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania and the Augustinian Lutheran Church in Guatemala. We rejoice that we are one church to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you, God, knowing pain of body, mind, spirit, and relationship. We trust in you for our own healing, and we entrust to you all those who need your Spirit's presence. We pray especially for Blanche Brommer, Lori Ford, Marilyn Cook, Melinda Martin, Roger Martin, Brenda Misukanis, Vadis Voes, Bev Tibbs, Dave Berg, Peggy Topol, Marin Beach, Don Monroe, Tom Foss, and Kevin Lane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you, God, still subject to the power of death, hatred, oppression, injustice, and exclusion. Make your Easter promises for life even more powerful in this community. Turn us into agents of your hope, hospitality, and healing. Grant comfort especially to those who grieve their loved ones, including Allison Butler, Timothy Hale, and Lana Thomason. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you, God, trusting in your gift of wisdom. Continue to bless and guide the high school seniors of this congregation as they prepare to graduate and move on to whatever you call them next. Hold their parents, families, friends, teachers, and coaches in love as you send them out into your world. Call us to prayer on their behalf today and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you, God, repenting of all the ways we have not loved others in word and action. We know that you call us all to be one body of believers, and yet we keep setting up divisions. As we approach your table today, forgive us of these sins. Make us one to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all this, God, knowing that you hear us and will answer, for we pray in the name of the risen Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen. And so it was out of his great love for us that our Lord gathered with his disciples and celebrated communion. So I invite you to take your communion elements and you can hold up your bread as I say these words. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. I invite you to hold up your juice or wine. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so as often as we eat this meal together, we remember our Lord and pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for communion, whether you're by yourself or others, I invite you to take your bread and exchange it or give it to yourself, saying, the body of Christ given for you. And likewise, with the wine or juice, simply say, the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.